Hey guys, it's Dr. Sarah Gottfried. I'm really excited to be with you for a hot minute before the weekend starts to roll out. I gave a couple of talks today for A4M and um, I just wanted to share some of the information that uh, I lectured about today. The first talk was on environmental stressors and how those turn into inflammatory triggers. And I'm curious if you have any questions about that, the things that I talked about included heavy metals, biotoxins like mold and how that leads to chronic um, inflammatory response syndrome, as well as um, ages. Ages are super important. Do you guys know about that? Advanced glycation products, that's what ages stands for. They're basically glucotoxins that um, can really cause problems. You can get them from meats that are cooked at high temperatures, such as on a grill, or carbs that are cooked at high temperatures. So, hi everyone. Let me know where you're from. Let me know if you have any questions before we start the weekend together. Another topic is uh, wildfires and what that does to the air. I've been posting about this and you can really smell the wild wildfires, wildfires here in Northern California. And you know, one of the issues is the particulate matter. That's the main pollutant that's in wildfires. So, uh, oh yes, you're from Mill Valley, from Mexico, Sydney, Australia, Orlando. Oh, so many different people. Hello and welcome. So glad you're here. So my first talk was on environmental stressors. I talked about toxic stress. I talked about, um, you know, kind of these toxins that we think about that we have around the house, like the flame retardants and the phthalates and the parabens and all these endocrine disruptors that can make you fat that are obesogens and can also rob you of cognition. So those are dementogens. So that's one class. Another class is toxic stress. I wonder if you have experienced toxic stress. I like to measure it, at least in childhood, with adverse childhood experiences. I like to screen my patients and know uh, what your score is. I'm curious if you've done an ACE test, if you know what your score is. But you can also have stress later in life, and that's highly associated with autoimmune disease and with dysregulation of the immune system. So those are some of the topics for the morning um, when I was speaking for the American Academy for Anti-Aging Medicine. And in the afternoon, I spoke about cardiovascular disease in women, some of the immune factors that we want to be thinking about, like what do hormones do to your immune system? How do we think about cardiovascular disease? Because it's actually, uh, it turns out that it, a lot of the problems with cardiovascular disease and the reason why it kills so many women is the effect on the immune system and how that shows up in blood vessels, especially the coronary arteries as well as others. So um, I wanted to see if you have any questions. I'm about to go have some cauliflower pizza, which sometimes causes a blood sugar spike. And uh, I'm still like looking for the cauliflower pizza recipe that doesn't cause a blood sugar spike. So Mary had mercury toxicity committed to infrared saunas. Yes, huge fan. I've got a sauna right outside of my bedroom. I try to do that five days a week for 20 to 60 minutes. This week it's been more like 20 minutes because it's been a crazy week. I wonder if you guys have had a crazy week. So um, let me know what kind of week you've had. How do you deal with the stress of the pandemic? Do you have kids that are going back to school? Oh my gosh, I've got one kid who went back to school about a week ago and she's finally starting to get in the groove, which is good. And then another kid that's going back to college. So Marie asks, where would you start if you're menopausal and insulin resistant? Such a good question. So one of the things I spoke about today is that for women who have hot flashes and night sweats, we know that this is associated with higher insulin levels, with higher C-peptide, which is um, part of the, the deeper work that we do looking at insulin glucose. So where do you start with that? Great question. So I would start first with diet. I think low carb Mediterranean or keto Mediterranean is a great way to go. 
I also like to base case where you are. So I like to know hemoglobin A1C, your fasting insulin, maybe your C peptide. I like to see where we're starting. And then I like to check fasting glucose. So I like to do that every morning. Uh, I check my fasting glucose and my insulin and I post, or sorry, my fasting glucose and my ketones. And I post about it usually in my story, especially if I have a problem. If it's stone cold normal, I don't post about it, but when I have a challenge, I like to post about it. So that's the first piece is diet, really dialing in diet. There's some very interesting data on resetting the insulin signal, fixing insulin block with a ketogenic diet. But I like to do that with a lot of vegetables. I like to eat a pound a day, a pound a day of vegetables on a ketogenic diet. So the way I do it's a little different. That's what my new book is about. How do you check your insulin at home? So the way that I know about checking your insulin at home is with a lab called ZRT. So they have a blood spot test that you can do. I've had my blood drawn uh, while in captivity of the pandemic. Uh, and I, I actually found it's not that bad. I went to Quest about two weeks ago and they're very good at the social distancing and being really careful with masks and so forth. So you could definitely do it um, at a lab. So diet, exercise, you gotta get your muscles really hungry for glucose. And one of the best ways I do that, that's really helped me with my insulin, I'm 53, but I'm not yet in menopause, is high intensity interval training. So I've changed the way that I exercise. I went from loving spin class to doing more weight training at home. Even during the pandemic, I got you know a bunch of weights on Amazon and I, I do heavy weights two thirds of the time and one third of the time I do cardio. So I think that's really helpful when it comes to uh, addressing insulin. And this is the advice of my uh, doctor who, who helps me with cardiovascular health and his name is Mark Houston. He's written a lot of textbooks. He's a thought leader in cardiovascular health and he pushed me to this, you know, if you look at your exercise routine, whether it's 30 minutes or 60 minutes, two thirds heavy weights, one third cardio. So I had to cut way back on my cardio in order to do this. And then another issue is supplements, but I don't think supplements can make up for a lousy diet or having too many carbs. You could also be carb intolerant. That's another thing to consider. Uh, some of the supplements that I think of as insulin sensitizers are berberine, our lipoic acid, uh, fish oil. So I take a balanced omega each day. I take like four grams of fish oil, omega-3, and I take one gram of GLA, and I also take a gram of evening primrose oil. So Sage, I'm 49. After five years of a journey, I'm now post-menopause. Congratulations, I take DIM and lots of fiber. So that's a great way to manage your estrogen. I like that. What about caffeine? I just posted about caffeine. I'm not a huge fan because I'm a slow metabolizer of caffeine, um, but that's, uh, I'm not sure if you're asking in general for health benefits. People who are fast metabolizers, which is half the population, they do fine with caffeine. They get all the health benefits and none of the risks. And those of us who are slow metabolizers like me, we get all the risks and feel you know, like a crazy person when we drink caffeine. In fact, I had some green tea this morning because I had to get up so early to lecture. Oh, it was like 5.20. Oh my God. Um, okay. Diagnosed with estrogen positive breast cancer about 1.5 years ago, stage one, had surgery using diet, but I'm conflicted between plant-based and keto advice. So that's a good question. You know I can't give you medical advice on social media, but what I can tell you from talking to a lot of oncologists is that uh, there's a couple of issues. One is they tend not to like keto. I've seen some early experiments with the ketogenic diet and breast cancer because it does help with insulin signal, which is part of the inflammation that's associated with breast cancer. But in general, most oncologists try to stay away from a high fat diet. So my preference would be to go Mediterranean to do, to do more of a plant-based approach. You can reduce your carbohydrates along with that. 
That's what I generally hear from oncologists. So I hope that's helpful. So I gotta get ready uh, to go have my, my keto cauliflower crust pizza. I see a question, how do we know if we're slow metabolizers of caffeine? The way that you check is with 23 or me, 23 and me or some other genetic test. Uh, are you taking new patients? Yes. So you can go to saragottfriedmd.com forward slash patient and you can sign up there to come see me. There's uh, That's a notification list and then I'm hoping to open my practice in October, November of this year. I hope, hope, hope it'll be before the end of the year. Talking about supplements, can you post your daily basis on them? Yes, that's a good idea. Maybe I'll do that this weekend since I'm trying to be underproductive. What are you guys doing this weekend? I'm gonna I'm gonna try to like underperform because I'm tired and uh, I need to like take it easy. So I hope you guys take it easy too. And I hope I got some of your questions answered. This is a good question. I'll answer this one, then we'll stop. Uh, will your practice be accessible financially to minority lower income? So yes. So I have a few different tiers that I have in mind. And one of the tiers will be group visits. And group visits will be very affordable. And I'll even have partial scholarships for that, that particular group. And group visits have been shown to be so effective for some of these conditions we're dealing with, like perimenopause, menopause, and insulin block, and uh, you know how to eat. Do we eat keto? Do we do Mediterranean? How do we find the right fit for us? So all of those things can be taken care of in a group visit, and that is very affordable. So we will make sure that that's the case and it's really clear and understandable. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm gonna go eat dinner with my family. I hope you have a great weekend. I hope you get some self-care, because we need that. We need that to keep going. Okay, guys, bye.